Auto Molester is a Capcom driving game from 2002, and it looks pretty cool. Auto Motor Lisa was released to less than expected sales as well as middling review scores. The game is part of Capcom's plan at the time to break into the new online gaming market. Motor Lista was developed for this plan alongside Resident Evil Outbreak and Monster Hunter, two games that would eventually go on to surpass Motor Lisa in sales. I found this old webpage that is still talking about the game's online features, it's pretty cool. I know I'm painting an amazing picture of the coolest racing game you've never seen or heard of, but it's not all bad. Like I said, the game looks really cool. It's also fun to play. Throughout this video, you'll see two versions of the game, the Japanese PS2 version and the American GameCube version. And this is a pretty important distinction. When bringing over the game to America, they changed the way that the cars handle, presumably to get around some of the Japanese reviewers feeling that the game was too easy. I can say, after playing both, yes, the Japanese version is easier, but this did not make the American version more difficult. It kind of made the game more annoying, but more exciting. I'll explain. The handling changes did two big things made it so that this really annoying sound happens whenever you get the car up to full speed, which as far as I can tell doesn't happen in the Japanese version, at least it never happened to me. The biggest change though was making the cars turn really weird. To be more accurate, the cars now accelerate slower and lose more speed in corners. This is most obvious when playing the track Roko Hill. Right off the bat, there's a big difference. You can see in the Japanese version, all the cars have about the same amount of speed off the line, but in the US version, you're noticeably slower than the other cars. I played the track five times in the US release and didn't get first once, but on my second go of the Japanese version, I won. But after some time, I did come back and got first place on my first attempt in the US version, so I don't really think it matters all that much. In the American version, they added an arrow right behind you when a car is close to passing you. This really pushes you to play better with the looming threat that you might get past at any time. A problem I have with a lot of racing games is after the first half of the track when you get into first place, it's mostly just a race by yourself because you're always super far ahead of everyone. And funnily enough, this is a problem in the Japanese version. The US release always makes you feel like you're racing someone that has the same chance of winning as you. I would honestly recommend playing the American version, it's the one I like better, there are more cars and maps. The driving in the Japanese version is better, but not that much better that you have to play it over the other. Just play whichever one you like better. The game really doesn't know what it's trying to be at times, it calls itself an arcade game, and its second mode is called arcade. But it also wants to be this semi-realistic racing game with all these things you can change like picking each part and making your own decals. The game has some pretty in-depth customization for what it's worth, but I don't think it amounts to much, especially in the US version with all the driving changes. I don't really think any of that matters though, because honestly for me, the art steals the show. It's like playing in a real anime world. I don't know why more fighting games don't go with this style. There are some like Nino Kuni, Jet Set Radio, and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. But other than Fighter Z, no other game has ever given me that experience of feeling like I was in an anime. The game is really cool just for that reason alone. You may have noticed throughout this video I say, it's really cool, or something like that, a bunch. And it's not just poor writing technique, it's also just kind of true. I've told you about how the game didn't sell well and has all these weird driving mechanics. But that doesn't really change the fact that Capcom just made a really cool racing game. So I also wanted to go over some of the music that is in the game, because honestly it's really good.
Honestly, track six is probably my favorite from out the whole game. If I can find a YouTube playlist that has all the songs in it, I'll link it in the description. I wouldn't expect to see another auto modalista ever. Doing some very thorough skimming of Google, all I could find was a 2003 IGN article talking about what the author would do for a sequel. And no, I didn't read. If you're looking for a cool racing game to get into or just want a fun get in, get out kind of game that's not as bullshit as like Mario Kart, I'd honestly recommend Automotalista. If you're still here, thank you. And if you liked the video, like, comment, and sub. Also, go follow my Twitch. I'm streaming now. If I'm not working, I stream from 6pm to 10pm. Thanks.